Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. You all know I love to rescue fabric and I get so much upholstery fabric on sample swatch boards like this given to me. The biggest problem that we have when working with these sample swatches isn't the fact that they're small pieces, it's trying to get the paper off the back of our fabric. I'm going to show you a few different techniques that I've been trying out to see what's the best way to do things. I don't actually know yet which is the best way to take the paper off. I'm going to be just as surprised as you, uh, but I do actually think I know what I'm going to do at the end of it, and I'll tell you the reasons why as well. These pieces of fabric here, if you remember a little while back, I got some a big sample book and it had great big pieces of sample swatch fabric in here. And this has got really heavy paper glued to the back of it. So this is probably the most stubborn fabric that I've got or paper that I've got to remove. So I'm going to try a few different um, techniques with this. And then I've got just regular sample swatch fabrics. These are all upholstery fabrics. So what I'm going to do is take you to the kitchen now and we'll prepare the first lot of sample swatches. Before we start, sometimes you'll get these sample swatch cards and the fabric comes away really easily like this one. So this is just peeling away very, very quickly. And the reason for that is that the glue's old. It's been sitting around for some time. And if you wait long enough, eventually the paper will come off very easily. So I'm not going to cheat and show you how easy it is to get fabric off. I want the challenge to be the difficult fabric. So there's no point me showing you these because the glue is old. It'll come away easily. These will be easier for me to separate. This one, however, is a swatch sample fabric upholstery and I can't lift the paper easily. This one does slightly come off on the end, but it's still going to tear. Let's try a few different things. I've had a lot of viewers actually give me some advice on different techniques that have worked for them. I'm going to try them out and see if they actually work and uh, let's have a look and see. So let's go to the kitchen first. I'm going to take a few sample swatches and we're going to try some hot water in the sink. Okay, I'm at the kitchen sink and all I'm going to do here is use hot water straight from the tap. Okay, you should be able to see the steam rising from that water there. All I'm going to do is pop in three samples of this fabric here. So this has got the really heavy paper behind it. We'll pop those in and I've got three pieces of the other one. So this one's got the paper all the way around the sides and I've kept the adhesive tape that's on the back. I know that this comes off with the iron, but let's see how it goes in the hot water. So I've got three swatch samples in here that will go in as well. It is hot, so I'm not going to hang around here. So I'll just make sure all those pieces of fabric are covered with the water. And I'll leave this to soak for about 10 minutes and then we'll come back and see how it's worked. In the meantime, we'll go back to my studio and try another method. Now these three pieces here, I've just taken straight out of the freezer. They've only been out for about a minute or so. And they've been in the freezer for Oh, over a month, I think. So this was a viewer's suggestion and it's not working. All right, I can confidently say that putting your fabric in the freezer doesn't work. It may work for a thinner card, uh, but these ones definitely don't work in the freezer. So I'll set that one aside and I know not to put any more fabric in the freezer. I've got my old cutting mat here because I'm actually going to try a few different chemicals to experiment with. And I've just got a glass dish as well. I might as well stick with the fabric that's been the most difficult to get off. Now, the first thing I'm going to try is methylated spirits. Methylated spirits, I think is white spirits overseas. Um, so let's try this. I'm going to pop the fabric in here and just put some methylated spirits in. We actually get this in abundance from house cleanouts, so 
I can use it liberally and see how it goes. And what I'm looking for is something that's going to take the paper and glue residue off quickly, preferably cleanly, because I don't want to waste my time uh, having to take paper off. Because I'm sewing to sell, I need to be mindful of the time that I take to do things. And if this works, that's fine, but I'm already going to say it's not going to be my preferred technique. Um, methylated spirits tends to dry your hands out, so and I can't stand that feeling. Look, it is actually working. I'm, I'm, yeah, that's interesting. I suppose if you wanted to try this, um, you could put a whole batch of it in the meth methylated spirits but then you've still got to wash the fabric so I've got a um, slimy residue on the paper underneath it is coming off quite well so as soon as you're able to wet the pieces properly the paper will actually come off quite easily you have the problem with fumes though. Don't know how safe it is to be inhaling it. But it's certainly working. So that's very interesting. I just went out to Chris's shed, grabbed a whole heap of chemicals. Yeah, I just thought I'd give a whole heap of chemicals a go. So that's interesting that this is working. But look, you can see it is time consuming uh, for me because I sew to sell. This is way too slow. I'd rather leave the paper in my products. This is highly flammable as well. And um, I'm not going to use this fabric. I think Chris might like it in his shed when he lights a fire next. <laughs> yep. All right, I'm going to leave this one. We know methylated spirits works. You will be able to wash it out. So you just throw it in the wash and then dry it. As I said, this is way too time consuming for me. I thought I'd have a look and see what would happen with this after all the paper was gone. I've rinsed the fabric and I don't expect any of this upholstery fabric to bleed and I don't really expect it to shrink either. I've never had any problems with that upholstery fabric. They're given like hundreds of thousands of rub tests because you don't want this sort of thing bleeding out onto your clothing when you're sitting on furniture. So I'm confident that none of these fabrics will ever run and the f the paper came off quite easily in the end with the methylated spirits or the white spirits but have a look at the back of it this is all glue residue on here so as soon as I've taken it to the kitchen and given it a good rinse you can see all the glue residue be interesting to see how it looks after it's dried out okay we're back in the kitchen with the hot water in the sink method the water's cooled down enough that I can put my hands in and we'll see how this works I think this is just a little bit too messy. The big piece of fabric in the back that holds all the layers together there, that's coming off quite easily. Actually, it comes off easier with the iron. Pulling your fabric like this is only going to distort the shape of it. And this isn't even the hard paper that I have a problem with. So all of this will come off with the iron. I think this is a very messy way of removing the paper. Let's try the really heavy one. You know, in looking at this now, I'm thinking that methylated spirits is actually better than this. I did this test a couple of weeks ago and if, I've con if I can find the fabric, I'll show you how it looks when it's all dried. You know, this is just a messy way of doing it and a time-consuming way of doing it. So although this will work, unless you want to put the time into it, I don't think I'd bother. It's, it's very, very messy. Okay, let's abandon this one and we'll see what other techniques we can come up with. These fabrics here came out of the sink a couple of weeks ago and 
I managed to get you know a fair bit of the paper off there's still a lot of sticky residue on there this one was actually tried with dishwashing detergent as well and once it's dried it's no easier to get the paper off so it's just not going to work so these are after they've been dried in the sink I think I can do just as well taking this paper off without it even having to touch water the freezer doesn't work and methylated spirits or white spirits does work but it's messy and time consuming this is IPA or isopropyl alcohol now I'm only going to use a very small amount because Chris does use this for his uh, watch repairs so I've just put a small amount onto the lid and I'll see how that goes so I'll just let that sit for a minute or so and see how that works so I'm going to try a little bit more on the other side because we want that to penetrate the fabric and go all the way through to the glue residue okay so I've let that soak in for about a minute or so and we'll see how this goes and that's not going to do anything so again this is another time consuming method of removing paper so IPA or rubbing alcohol uh, will help loosen the paper but it's messy and time consuming I think so far the methylated spirits or, or the white spirits have worked the best okay I'll put that one aside and we'll try the next chemical the next thing I'm going to try is a product called shellite it's flammable now I'm trying chemicals here but this is something that I will never ever use on any of my fabric products but I'm trying it anyway just to see if there is actually any other way to take the glue off uh, fabric do not swallow I'm not going to be doing that okay pop the fabric in now shellite is used for metal cleaning stove fuel and lighter fuel see how this goes it smells like I'm in a mechanics workshop now so I'll let that sit for a minute and see if that does anything okay we've let that soak for a bit and I think this is going to be a miserable failure as well doesn't even come close to coming off I'm not even going to try any further shellite is a fail which is good because I really didn't want to have to use any harsh chemicals to try and get the paper off my fabric all of these pieces I'm actually going to go and soak them in detergent get rid of all the chemicals and if I can get most of the residue off I will actually be using them so I'm happy enough to sacrifice a few swatch samples and they'll go into something after they've been cleaned thoroughly so shellite's no good okay the last liquid or chemical that I'm going to try is just sewing machine oil I usually get about five liters of this at a time it, it comes in handy for lots of other things around the home now this is quite oily but we'll see how it goes okay so that's been soaking in the sewing machine oil at least my hands are going to feel much better after using the oil and that's completely useless gosh it's actually more useless than the shellite I knew I was clutching at straws trying to use the sewing machine oil but I thought something gentle might help but it doesn't that is no good either the last thing we're going to do is iron the fabric so let's have a look at how easily most of the fabric comes off with the iron I've just spent the past 20 minutes in the sink cleaning all those fabrics and I feel like I've turned into a prawn I'm so wrinkly the last thing I'm going to do is use the iron whilst I'm at it I'm going to show you how I get these off they're actually quite hard to get off so I will just get a screwdriver in there just a flat one and prise the cards off and 
These hangers I like to keep too. Um, I think they'll be handy in a project one day. There's a whole heap of staples around here. Just get your screwdriver in underneath. Often I'll actually just cut my fabric straight across because it's a lot quicker. And a lot of the times this has so many holes in it at the top and so many uh, bits of glue that it's just as easy to cut the top bits off. And then you can pull that away from the rest of the board. And discard the header and these hangers come off really easily after that. I just put these into a drawer and I think one day they'll be quite handy. If you remember I did the video on um, on the shoe rack and I did a video on something else on the hanging um, on the hanging clothes peg holder these kinds of hangers will be really handy for that. So I'll just pop those into a drawer and one day I'll use them. Now to get all the paper off, so I like these larger pieces, these are fantastic. Some of them are easy to get off, sometimes they're not. I do have a couple of companies whose glue is really adhesive and I can't get that off. But this is now a perfectly usable piece of fabric and that will probably end up becoming one of my bigger bags, you know, the, the fully lined uh, shopping bags video that I did some time ago. I'll pop a link up in the corner. Uh, so that's what I use these size fabrics for and also bigger bags like my utility bags and zippered bags. Set that one aside. Now to get the glue off this, we have our sample pieces at the front and these all have paper glued to all the bits of fabric. On the other side, you've got a really thin cotton. It looks like an interfacing and this has been glued on as well. This comes off easily. All you need to do is heat up that bit of tape at the back there, just in small sections. And it will come away quite easily. I just fold that in half just to bring the glue back together so it doesn't transfer onto the back of the fabric and then I'll continue to heat the remainder of that piece until I can get all the swatches separated. So this is by far the easiest way to get the backing sheet off the fabric. Now with these fabrics, as I mentioned earlier, if I have an older swatch sample like this, you can see the paper is already coming apart. It'll come off really easily. These are the ones I love to work with. I've got a little bit of fabric at the back which I will iron to remove the whole strip, but then these pieces the glue's barely holding on and they're fantastic. So they come off very, very easily. It's a nice colour. But most of the time you get stubborn paper like this. Press it. You've got to be careful when you're pressing as well that you're not going to damage the fabric. You want to make sure that the iron isn't too hot for your fabric. Small bits like this I would actually leave because when I square up my fabric later, it's usually chopped off. Let's see how we go on the sides here. The problem with doing this is that it's usually quite hot, but see that comes away really well. And this has got ink. I might actually go from the other side. And that comes off nice and easily. 
So it's certainly a lot less messy using just the heat from the iron to get your paper off and it distorts your fabric a lot less than anything else does as well. So let's do that one again. I'm just going to leave this bottom one because it gets trimmed off and if it doesn't then it's usually caught up in my seam allowance. Sometimes you have to do this again. If the paper is becoming problematic, I'll leave a lot of it in. See, for me, this is already taking too much time. I will just leave the rest of that bit of paper where it is because I know that this is going to um, transfer onto the underside of my iron. I'm going to iron this from the other side. And it's probably not really necessary to even get rid of that bit of paper because you can see the grey here, it's faded at the top there. That's where it's been hanging on the sample board. So uh, it's obviously faded in over time and it's not usable anyway. But I'm going to show you how to get rid of it, the paper. And again, this one's a little bit problematic as well. I would leave the paper. But as I said, because this section here is faded, I would actually chop that off and just use this section of the fabric. So there we go. The best way to get rid of the paper is to iron it. And these fabrics here that have got the really heavily glued paper on the back, these are the ones that have been the most difficult for me to try and get paper off. And I really haven't had much success with it. So I'm going to just iron the paper for a lot longer than I usually do. Usually it only needs a little burst of heat and it'll come off. But these ones have been taking a lot longer. They actually have nylon stitching underneath as well. I really should be using some baking paper to protect my iron. Okay, so it, it clearly needs a lot more heat with the iron for it to come away, but it does come away. You know, for me, this was actually quite a good experiment to have to do. I've been wanting to know for a while if there were other methods that I could use to remove the paper from the back of my fabric, what would happen to the fabric if I used those methods. I think the best technique overall was just ironing the paper from the back of the fabric. Oftentimes there's still a lot of paper left on there, but as you would have seen in my previous video with my crossbody bags, I left a lot of the paper on there, but by the time I'd squared all the fabric up, there was barely any paper left over. Because I have several hundred cards of swatch fabric, it's not feasible for me to go and use methylated spirits or put all the fabric into the sink and wash it and then have to dry it and hang it out and then go through the hassle of grabbing all the paper off. It's so much easier just to come in here, use the iron and get as much paper off as I possibly can. So I think for me, the iron is by far the most simple method. It's the cleanest method and it'll do the least amount of damage to my fabric. So I've got really nice fabric pieces, little bit of paper on the back of it. It's not going to hurt anything because they're lined. Uh, but these ones here, they, I don't think they look really nice on the back. There's so much uh, rubbish and paper and glue residue on the back of the fabric that I don't think that these would be something that I want would want to comfortably um, go and sew to sell. I've had a couple of other suggestions. Somebody had actually mentioned just the other day that bus drivers use a kind of, some kind of a chewing gum remover from the, their seats, which is a great idea. But when you're working with volumes of fabric, I, I don't think it's necessary to have to go and use liquids or or chemicals in particular to get rid of the paper from your fabric or the gum from your fabric. These ones here with the really thick card or heavy glue on the back of them, I'm just going to have to iron them for a lot longer than I normally would, but that's fine. I'm actually still working on uh, a couple of different ideas for projects where I can just keep the paper on there sew two bits of fabric together and perhaps make some bookmarks or coasters 
uh, even join the fabric together and make placemats. So I haven't given up on these. Because I'm so big into time management, I would rather not have to go and take the paper off. I would rather try and find something useful to do with these fabrics. So watch this space. I'm still looking for something to do with those pieces of fabric. I'm not going to throw them out. I'll just sit on those for a while and see what I'm going to do. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it solved some of your problems in getting rid of the paper from the back of your fabric. I don't think I'm going to try any other chemical. Well, I'm certainly not going to try any other chemicals. If you have another idea that you think might work, let me know. Uh, I'm certainly willing to try it. And if I do find something that is much more successful than the iron, I'll do another quick video just to let you know what will work. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.